Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss everything you need to know before you go to St. Thomas. This island is so beautiful, but it does come with a price. Even though it's in a U.S. territory, it is pretty expensive to live in this stay on this island. Let's get into it and start with the first thing that we didn't know. They don't have Uber or Lyft, so you have to do taxis. They charge per person $9 to $15. A lot of places only take cash, so make sure you have enough. We almost started running out of money because it was over $100 a day in taxis. Another thing to keep in mind is a lot of places aren't near each other. You're either going to have to walk or take taxis. Now, if you don't want to have a taxi, you could always rent your own car. But just remember, the cars drive on the other side of the road, and the roads are very windy and go up a bunch of hills. The second thing we weren't prepared for is that food and drinks are extremely expensive. For example, Megan's Bay charged us over $110 for three chicken fingers and two fries and five Gatorades, which is insane. They charge so much because this is more of a tourist beach and people from the cruise ships will pay it. Now, on the other hand, the greenhouse was affordable and it was so good we ended up going there a couple of times. They're located downtown. Aguave was another place that we went to that was really good food and affordable. Now, some things are going to be a little bit more expensive, but it shouldn't be ridiculously expensive, so just make sure you're watching out for that. My meals have been coming there around $20, which isn't a bad price. So if you're looking to get some drinks and relax, I recommend the Rum Hut. They have swings as the chairs, which are really cool, and the drinks were affordable and so good. So me and my family, four of us, decided to take the ferry over to St. John. It was like $8 a person, and I think it came to around like $64 for a round trip. We could leave any time that we want. The only problem is we have to pay additionally for taxis, so it came over to $160 to get around the island. Now, St. John was more expensive because the only way that they get stuff is through ferries. Me and my sister decided to get a root beer float that cost $10, but it was really good. Here's a video of me trying a root beer float that I absolutely loved. If you want to get food on St. John, go to the tap and still. Their food was really good and it wasn't a bad price and the service was amazing. We left St. John, we headed to St. Thomas and Red Hook is right there where all the ferries are. So we decided to stop and have dinner, which was really good and wasn't a bad price at all. So another thing that you have to look into is when you want to do excursions and do certain things, not everything is open Monday through Friday. For example, the Sky Rise to Paradise Point is only open Wednesday and Friday if there is a cruise coming. I would definitely call beforehand to make sure that there's a cruise coming and that they're open that day. For us, there was a cruise there, so it was open. It was around $40 a person, and we wanted to do the Skyride to Paradise in the Pirate Museum. So I believe the Skyride to Paradise is open from 10 to 5, but the Pirate Museum is only open to 4 p.m. So make sure that you go to the Pirate Museum first before you go on the Skyride to Paradise. I really enjoyed the Skyride to Paradise point in the Pirate Museum. There was so much stuff to do at the museum. At the top of the mountain, they had drinks, they had a restaurant, they had gift shops, and we got an amazing view. We didn't get any food, but I got some drinks and it wasn't a bad price. Now let's talk about the beaches. The first one I'm going to talk about is in St. John, Maho's Bay. They had a huge bar with drinks. I think like a pina colada was around $10. They had a bunch of stuff that you could rent out. I can't imagine how expensive it was, but we decided to bring our own snorkel stuff because when we went shopping, it was around $40 to $100 for goggles. Now to rent them, I don't know how much they were. I know that they're pretty expensive. If you could, I recommend bringing a snorkel goggle with you in your suitcase, which we did and we saved a lot of money. Now, I recorded all these videos on my phone and I brought a waterproof phone case off Amazon for $16 and it was the best thing I've ever done. We got to see so much sea life. It was free to get into Maho's Bay, but it was $15 a person to get there on a taxi. Now the next beach we're going to be talking about is Megan's Bay. I've been here one time before when I was on a cruise ship. A lot of tourists come here, so it is very crowded. You usually don't see a lot of sea life here because it's mostly sand, but if you go on the right side near the rocks where I am, I was able to spot two sea turtles, which is crazy because usually they're never at this beach. 
I forgot to mention they do charge you to get in this beach. I believe it was around $9 each. My cousin decided to get us ice cream after and it was around $5 for one scoop, which was a lot. After the ice cream, we decided to eat at a restaurant. This was rated number one on Google on this island. I would say it's a little more expensive, around $30 a meal, but it had an amazing view, amazing service, and the food was amazing. Now onto another beach. I don't know how to say the name. I always say it wrong, but I think it's Koshi Beach. It's supposed to be one of the best places to go snorkeling. They have Coral World. We didn't get to go swimming in the beach, but we just drove by just to check it out. I feel like everyone that comes to St. Thomas has to check out the world famous banana daiquiri place. It's located on mountain top. I didn't get a chance to go inside because we had to go to so many different places. But if I went back to St. Thomas, I would definitely go there again. So I noticed that people in my comments from the last video was asking about the weather. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, if it rained, it only rained for a couple of seconds and then it cleared up and it was sunny again. The sun is very strong and I have olive skin and I'm tan myself and I did get a little bit burnt so make sure you're putting on a good amount of sunscreen. So that pretty much covers everything that I think that you need to know before you go to St. Thomas. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any other questions leave it down in the comment and I'll answer them. Bye guys!